Hello, this is Conrad Anker as a guest with Connecting the Dots. Yeah, I'm ready. Ready? Okay. Tiksa. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Ama Tablam Prakriti Saskriti Rakhoj. Namaste. Connecting the dots with Conrad Anchor. Prastuti Matapailai Hardik Swagatsa Ma Prem Baniya. As a Matapai Samakshe Yuta Estu Bakitula Prastut Gardesu, just like Nepal or Nepali Kalagi, Afno Jiban Ku Sampuna Adhyaya, Azabano Derija Swadhyaya, Yugdan Gornubaikosa. Nepal Ma Summer Pit. This to bhakti to lai as America ma hami yu sambad garna gai rahe kaso. So let's connect the dots with Coronary uh, Anchor. Welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome, Prem. Thanks for having me here. It's a real treat. I'm so honored and uh, pleased to have you here in my show too. Uh -huh. uh, oh, you yeah, have been a long time. It's been like yeah. Well, we met in January. Yeah. And then here it is June. So we're in Telluride, Colorado, and mm -hmm. yeah, it was great to meet you there. And I. Just finished Mountain Film, which is the um, the annual film festival that began in 1979. So it's a wow, it's, it's a long annual, history, right? Yeah, well, it's a great, and they celebrate mountain climbing and mountain climbing films. Hmm. So nowadays you are busy with the like festivals and the other things. Also, you are writing books or anything? Yeah, I'm um, always have writing projects that I'm working with, but there's um, this. Festival type work is, um, I do a lot of that on behalf of North Face, that's my employee, and then working with different film festivals and events like that. Mm. So, yeah, it's a pretty good. It's a good so, thing. you are running in 61 years right now. Yeah, 61. <laughs> and still busy every single day, every single moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, um, well, yeah, <clears throat> if you stop moving, then. And then, then you're done. So you have to what, keep moving. What exactly inspires you to do all these mountain things? And well, I enjoy doing it, but I think the what our factory setting is like, mm -hmm. what you were made of when you were a child, like mm -hmm. that was like to go climbing. So I'm just hearing that voice, and I'm going climbing. Mm. But I like every day. I need to do four to six kilometers of activity walking wow. on my feet to stay fit or some exercise that goes with it so every single day you do like six to seven kilometers or yeah walking or anything or climbing or yeah yeah. Right. Okay. yeah so, so I that some days i don't get it but i like here we can go up and down the stairs and mm -hmm. so stay in motion that's really thinking about staying in motion is more than anything but yeah we need to do four to six kilometers of walking a day mm -hmm. because that's the way we humans came to be over time mm. so so how is your family everyone's doing well jenny and the boys um they're now men um they everyone's in montana and doing well oh Thanks okay. for so usually you travel united states most of the times and uh, abroad as well right yeah some expeditions uh to uh mountain ranges but mostly in Western United States, and then uh, visiting universities for speaking engagements, um, and then working film, media work. Yeah, that makes you happy, right? Oh yeah, I get to interact mm -hmm. with people, and what we do in terms of sharing, being outdoors is, um, yeah, it's a good, it's a good value. That's right. I, I have a, like picture about yourself and most of Nepali people also have a imagination like an imagination like kind of like if if you picture like Conrad Ryankar he is he loves Nepal and he have contributed a lot of things for Nepal and also you have like Himalayan schools or something so what are the projects that you are running in Nepal right now yeah um, and thank you thank you for recognizing my care for Nepal and everything is a wonderful wonderful people so um, yeah I've been visiting Nepal uh, since 35 years mm -hmm. and enjoy the people and the scenery and the culture it's all very much a good part of it and then 20 years ago with uh, partners of, in Nepal mm -hmm. uh, beginning the Kumbu Climbing Center which is vocational training for high altitude workers in Nepal 
man. You say like KKC, right? KCC. K sorry, KCC. Yeah. Okay. So how many employees or what exactly you are doing with that KCC? Oh, a voc it, it offers training. So it takes place okay. in the winter and okay. there's um, over 1,600 students that have graduated from the program and been associated with it. And so it offers training for the people that work in the mountains. And so realizing that they'll be a safer climber mm -hmm. if they have the proper skills. So as a way to give back to the people of Nepal after spending time over there, the, the Kumbu Climbing Center is a way to, to make climbing safer for the people. Okay. So it's a professional school. Yeah. Okay. So you do the training for... Uh... We work, we partner. So all the training now is done by Nepali instructors. So they're all... Okay. So we work together and, and train climbing, but it's uh, also an innovation hub. There's mm -hmm. businesses. Okay. Um, Everest Gear came from uh, graduate students uh, from there. And then mm -hmm. many of the uh, clothing shops that are in... Uh, in in Namche, they've they've worked with the school and the electricity company. So yeah, it's a good um, it's a good place to get good ideas going. Awesome. So the so name itself is connecting the dots with coronary anchor. Yeah. I want to connect your dots yeah. that you've been through. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to your childhood. How was like your like you know activities or dreams things when you were a child? Yeah, Do you remember those things? I um, really enjoyed being outdoors. And mm -hmm. by oh, the time I was a young man, I, all I wanted to do was work to go climbing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So uh, your environment that time, your family members, anyone who was a climber or something that time that yeah, inspired you? Yeah, my father you? was a climber and his friends. So they took me out and they took me climbing. So, mm. yeah. Okay. So your entire life is running to the climb, climbing and the mountains and hills, right? Yeah, just at a young age. So. Mm, okay. Yeah. So then after, uh, you have written some uh, books as well. Yeah. What, what are the things that you like inspired that time and you started climbing and like, you know, you are inspiring some other people to climb too as well. Yeah, probably the, um, I enjoy getting outdoors in the mountains mm -hmm. and the relationship I have with my climbing partners, that is meaningful to me. So at the end of okay. the day, you come back and you're more of a friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right, okay. So uh, instead of Nepal, have you uh, ever visited any other like South Asian countries and then you have contributed anything, Nalda? Yeah, I've been to uh, Tibet, okay. uh, Pakistan, India. Okay. So, but I, not a program in the same sense like with okay. the KCC. Mm. So KCC is the only project you are running now? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we're from afar. It's, it's managed um, and mostly funded um, by Nepalis. So. Sounds good. So you love Nepal so much that your activities like proves it, right? So how you imagine the future of Nepal? Um, yeah, the, it's a challenge because it's um, it's so mountainous that mm -hmm. factories like you have in Bangladesh, you have to transport everything in and out of Nepal and it's the roads and, and everything like that. But the, um, the, the, the tourism opportunities are always present there and, and to build upon that, um, yeah, it'd be good to see fewer Nepalis, maybe it's just my view, having to to leave and I mean, so many young people leave the country and if there was mm -hmm. um, tech sectors and, and right. there, but yeah, it's definitely what makes Nepal beautiful is also makes it a challenge because mm -hmm. to get anything to Kathmandu is it's a lot of work or expensive. That's right. So uh, as per your experience in this like 20 years in Nepal, right? Yeah. What are the things that government has to improve, you know. Uh, I'm talking about the mountains and things, you know, yeah. the system. So what are the the feedback or like comments or suggestions that you that you want to provide to government? Yeah, they're um, understanding the impact of the people mm -hmm. um, and then working with um, the waste. So the, the durable waste, uh, the recyclable waste and the human waste. Um, 
if I'm a tourist, I have an impact on that. So I need to, I need to understand that. Mm -hmm. So, but um, yeah, that's um, the, maybe to understand the, the a caring capacity of Go the ahead. climbing system. So how many people can climb. come to the mountains and climb? So, yeah. so that means uh, you have faced a lot of challenges in uh, tourism sector in Nepal, right? No, everything's been good. There's not no challenges. I mean, we, you know, as a climber, we purchase our permit and we work with the, the uh, liaison officer. So mm -hmm. there's overall nothing really too negative. I mean, it's a lot easier yeah. in Nepal than it is in some of the other Himalaya countries. Yeah, I so, appreciate and we appreciate yeah, you yeah. that you have very positive yeah. vibes about Nepal yeah, and yeah. mountains. Uh -huh. But at the same time, uh, I'm talking about the the waste in mountains, you know, oh, yeah. and the trash things. Also, the, the you know, uh, those people also climbing this Mount Everest mm -hmm. who does not have any experience before or yeah. trainings and things, you know, people are dying there yeah. every day. I mean, every season, you know. Yeah. So I'm pointing some those things like uh, that we need to improve. Yeah, certainly. There's, so um, what's your experience to speak? Yeah. For Mount Everest specifically, it would be good to have a carrying capacity study. Mm -hmm. So go there and understand how many people can be on the mountain at any given time. All right. This year was less people than last year last and year. also less fatalities. So mm -hmm. a, a better year on Everest. And so once um, that was yeah, understanding that, but then looking at how many people can um, be on the mountain at any time and, and what their resources um, require. That's correct. So we are like talking about Nepal and Nepali tourism. So before I uh, start this conversation, I was thinking about the branding things about Nepal, right? Yeah. So Nepal is a country like that has a lot of like potentiality. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about tourism, the religion, like destinations as well. Buddha yeah. was born in yeah. Nepal, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine you are the expert in tourism sector. How can we brand Nepal as a brand Nepal? Well, there's mountain something. So mountain paradise, mountain holiday, mountain treasure. But those, those are kind of standard names. But something that involves mountains, that be, it shapes the culture and the people of, of Nepal. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about uh, climate change and global warming. Yeah. Nowadays, you have seen uh, like many mountains are naked. There is no snow. So in this situation, do you think that we can contribute or, or Nepal or any other countries? Because this is global issue. Yeah. So how can we address this yeah. issue? They're, um, the, the glaciers that are in Nepal, and then by extension, all of the Himalaya, they um, provide water to the five of the major world rivers that then provide water for the people in Southeast Asia. And the glaciers that are in the mountains, they, one, they record mm -hmm. the history of the climate. So you can go back and you can study the ice cores, but they also react to a warmer climate climate and they react by melting. Mm -hmm. So Nepal is suffering the consequences of the increased carbon that collectively the whole world is using and that more of us are using. So the, um, the glaciers and the melting of that glacier on the initial beginning part of it mm -hmm. is, um, is something that we need to be aware of and we need to be, uh, be thinking of it. And so mm -hmm. there's a responsibility for people like myself that are from the western part of the world that consume a lot of energy to address it through technology engineering those sort of solutions but then also policy and government regulation yeah that's right uh i have another question to you about the the dot that i want to connect what are the dots that you connect to the Nepal and you invested a lot of yeah. time, you your lot of sweat and yeah. tears to yeah. Nepal. What are the reasons or what are the things that inspired from Nepal? 
Yeah. When I was a young boy, I was the story of the first ascent of Everest and uh, Tenzing Norgay at Hillary and then the American ascent in 1963. I was one years old, so maybe it was still news when I was Mm -hmm. And then following climbing with that, but um, I, in studying at school, I always remember the Nepali flag, okay. which is like this, mm -hmm. and I always saw that, I was like, oh, I wonder what Nepal is, but, um, and then I went there um, the first time in 1990. 1990, wow, so that was the first time? Yeah. Uh, you went there for... The Amadablam, climbing Amadablam, mm -hmm. so the name of your show. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you submitted Amadablam in, yeah, in 1990 yeah. December. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So that was the first time that you went to Nepal. Yes. And after that, can you please explain the series of Nepal that you went and did the thing? Yeah. So that I, I then continued the climb, but 99 was the first time I went to Everest. Okay. I went there on the Tibet side and it was the first time I did a big expedition with a lot of Sherpa and that classic expedition. So everything I'd done was smaller uh, mm -hmm. leading up to it. So okay. on that one, uh, that was how I um, got to know uh, Panuru mm -hmm. um, and Mongal to, um, to Sherpa that were with us on that expedition. And we then had the idea to, um, to come up with the Kumbu Climbing Center. So that was the beginning of the dots. And that was 99. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're... Uh, 25 years later now since the Mallory expedition. Wow. So you have submitted Mount Everest three times, right? Yes. Okay. So the first uh, first time you went to Nepal was 1990. Yeah. Then after uh, you submitted uh, Mount Everest from Tibet. 99. Yeah. 99. Yeah. And then after... Uh, 2007. 2007. That was second summit. Yeah. From Tibet. From Tibet. Yeah. Okay. And, and then third? 2012 from Nepal. 2012 from Nepal. Yeah. How you explain about your dream and what are the things that people have to know about you? Well, I wake up in the morning. I want to make the most of each day. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy um, being with people and supporting them and seeing people do well. The um, kindness and happiness is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> It doesn't okay. cost you anything, but it makes everyone Correct. feel good. So Correct. we need to be good people. And I think that for me is uh, in my being with the people of Nepal, that I that that friendship is nice. And mm. there's, yeah, Nepal's not invading another country right now. <laughs> very peaceful. And for me, one of the most beautiful things about Nepal is, is, is how in Kathmandu, you have Hinduism and Buddhism that Correct. they share in the same space and there's Correct. respect and there's understanding and you celebrate holidays together and mm -hmm. you'll have good ashes inside mm -hmm. the Buddha and so there's really good things with that. Is there any like dream or any things that you have to accomplish in the future? Any project? <sighs> just a, just a to live each day with purpose and, and have fun with it and, mm -hmm. and help people um, understand the mountains. So I'm a mountain climber. So from the earth sciences aspect to the professional climbing, anything that connects to mountains, that's my life. And that's my connection to Nepal. Mm. This is some of the world's most beautiful mountains. Awesome. Any regrets in life? No, don't live life with regrets. <laughs> Yeah, you can be sad about something, but mm -hmm. just go forward. And so, yeah, it's going to be, it's always the best part. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, any music or any any song in Nepali that you know? Oh, I listen to Raju Lama. He's KCC graduate. And, okay. And, but, you know. Um, just on BDB, just on BDB. Let's some Piriri. Yeah, everyone. okay, okay. <laughs> let, let, let's try, let's try. Yeah. Uh, let's some Piriri, let's yeah. some Piriri. Yeah. Ude Rajon ki dada ma banjang, let's some Piriri. Yeah. Can you try? Let's some Piriri, let's some Piriri. Just some Piriri, let's some Piriri. Just some Piriri. Okay. So we appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts and everything. Yeah. Thank you so very much. And uh, 
finally, if you want to say something, please. Yeah, thank you very much to all the people of Nepal and, and for being wonderful uh, hosts when I'm a guest. So, Deri Dam Danyabad. Thank you. Thank you, Deri Danyabad. Amatablan, Prakriti, Sanskriti, Rakhods.